Hey. How are folks doing on... It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's been a while since I have seen any of y'all on a Sunday. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, does AV seem good and all? I don't think I've changed my setup at all since... Uh Oh, yes. Yeah, the Wild Wednesday anniversary thing. Cool. Okay, well, um, yeah, so uh, my actual boxed version of Sigil is in the mail, but uh, I saw that the digital download version was available, and I figured it's probably going to take me multiple little streaming sessions like this to play through all nine of the levels. So I figured I would stream today and then maybe stream tomorrow evening or night hopefully with a with a with a boxed version but either way uh what you get when you get the digital download is apparently exactly the same um <clears throat> yeah and this is the readme for sigil um and there's a few different files config uh included with it um the ones with the underscore compat things uh, are for using with source ports that can't have their own episode 5 defined. Uh, so it replaces the sigil maps replace episode 3. Um, and then sigil.wad is the actual wad itself. And then sigil shreds is uh, a wad that contains just the buckethead music tracks in mp3 format. You know, which I guess there are a number of source ports that can read that. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I, I booted this up only to confirm that like I could get to the title screen and all that. But yeah, let's jump in. Um, Romero has included... Uh, yeah, <laughs> John author John Romero. Uh, other wads by author doom.wad, doom1.wad, doom2.wad, e1m8b, and e1m4b. Uh, the little story text here is Baphomet was only doing Satan's bidding by placing a powerful sigil in the teleporter out of E4M8 to bring you back to hell. Somehow they didn't understand that that's the reason that, that you're the reason they failed in the first place. It's time to trash the place with your arsenal, get out of hell, and get back to Earth to face the more advanced demons that were sent up ahead. Lock and load, rip and tear. So, yeah, we've got some, yeah, the, some credits here. Uh, it looks like Boris Climes, Zazer, and Kurt Baumgartner were recruited from the Doom community for testing. And then uh, Christopher Lavelle did the box art uh, and like the, the cool title, poster art, etc. Um, Buckethead tracks for the soundtrack, obviously. And then also, uh, yeah, Romero got uh, James Jimmy Paddock, uh, you know, well-known, you know, storied Doom modder to uh, compose some MIDI tracks to go with the non-Sigil Shreds version. So, yeah. All right, well, yeah, let's jump in. E5M1. Let's boot it up here. And, yeah. All right, so we've got, like, a custom title screen, theme, custom title screen and theme here. Yeah. Good title screen and all that. This is all looking real good. Yeah, I don't know how many folks are uh, are showing up to this. It's uh, you know, it's not it's definitely not my usual time, but um, I don't know. I also just kind of wanted to. I also just kind of wanted to uh, to have this playthrough logged and on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. All right. So a lot of the a lot of the track a lot of the MIDI tracks from Jimmy, which I do not believe we will be hearing. Uh, our previously released tracks. Um, but either way, it's cool that all these different people were pulled in to make this thing. So, yeah, let's get started. Sigil, and this is a big question. Should I play UV or Hurt Me Plenty? Um, 
I'm I've heard that this is pretty hard, that this is like E4 M2 hard. Um, I feel up to the challenge of ultraviolence, but I could also do hurt me plenty, and maybe that would make it a little easier to to just chill out and enjoy enjoy the architecture or whatever. I don't know. I if y'all feel strongly or something, then I'll wait for a, for a little bit uh, and see what y'all have to say. But I guess I usually play hurt me plenty doing wad Wednesday, but I can also kind of recognize. That this is something that wants to be played on UV. This is also not to say that I wouldn't do a playthrough of this later uh, with UV and sort of the non-first impression, like more studied thing, you know, as if I were playing any of the other existing Doom stuff that I've played lots and lots of times. So there's always room for a, for a UV playthrough uh, later. So yeah, let's go ahead and do Hurt Me Plenty. All right. <clears throat> okay, so we are starting off... We're getting a cool... This is like a Buckethead, like, um, medley track, I want to say. Because um, it sounds like I recognize scraps of, like, a whole bunch of different Buckethead tracks. But it might also just be an original composition that's just flying all over the place. Um, and yeah, I don't think it shows the name of the track that's currently playing. But, uh, but yeah. All right. We're in this cool-looking, like, jagged, weird, star-shaped thing. Uh, this level is called Baphomet's Demez. And actually, I don't actually know how to pronounce, even though this word was also used uh, as part of the, the name of a heretic map. Uh, the Stagnant Demez. Or maybe, it, maybe it's an episode name, I forget. Anyway, uh, it's a bad place that you don't want to be. So, cool. All right, let's do it. And, yeah, like, I don't see any switches here, but I'm kind of guessing that there's a weird... Yep, as I suspected, there's a shoot wall thing, and you shoot you shoot the evil eye, um, and it triggers something, because it actually hits the wall behind it. All right, so we've got, like, this broken kind of platform across lava. Not a super clear way. All right, so I guess we do another one of these... All right, yeah, and that brings that up. So yeah, that's like a whole level design convention that was not really present in the original Doom, uh, but is being used here. I think that's always like a question of like, if, you know, here we have Romero doing a legit episode five to Doom, and it's like, yeah, what's different about it from, especially E3 and M4, which are already doing like a hell theme, you know, like what makes this unique and different? Um, he's definitely using all vanilla textures here, but, uh, you know, which I think is fine and good. I, I, I think, like, making new a new texture set for this, for, for, for an episode 5, is a whole can of worms, you know, because it's like, all right, how much are you actually adding to Doom's original, like, art direction and stuff? Um, yeah. All right, cool. So this is another little, like... Yeah, all right. I, I, I like that, you know, it was... This definitely feels like a properly built up and developed game mechanic type thing with the, what with the little yeah any of these are these these are getting a little these are getting harder and harder each time oh hey it's a little lost soul all right we're bringing this up I am kind of expecting to have to have some monsters pounce on us yep I think it's probably this is probably going to ramp up in intensity roughly as expected. Okay. So yeah, we're getting like these cool Yeah, so this is an entirely linear path. <laughs> oh man. Um But it's got like these little you know, it almost feels like uh Disneyland ride murals where we're going past on the main track here, and these things are just purely assembled for our um, you know, for visual presentation's sake. Uh, but yeah. Okay, yeah, somebody in the... Yeah, um... Domain is pronounced... Demain. It, it is, I don't know if it's Domain or Demain, as in the French pronunciation. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Miriam Webster says it can either be Domain or Demain. Okay. It's 
the root word for domain, I believe. Okay, interesting. All right. So domain. This Baphomet's domain. All right. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. And yeah, like this is entirely off. I think we can backtrack from here. But yeah, what was it that I was? Yeah. Okay. So we're seeing like through these little windows here. I don't know if we're going to return to this later or what. But just this ridiculously cool, like jagged red cracks, uh, as seen in uh, E4, e e sorry, E1M8B. Um, just yeah, jagged, evil-looking cracks and pentagrams and so forth. So Romero's having a lot of fun here, just decorating this. And oh, look at that. Okay, so we definitely. I don't think we can. I don't think we can doom jump there. So kind of guessing that we're going to be like doubling back through here or maybe there's a secret that'll let us back through anyway i've talked enough about this section let's get into all right yeah so we're seeing a shift in texturing here into we're, we're back in good old green marble hell a little lift going down all right Oh, oh, that was uh, that was the end of the level. All right. All right. So yeah, there almost certainly is a way to. Uh... Yeah, I don't really know what to. Uh... Okay, so that was actually the exit switch. And I'm wondering if that's going to be a theme as well. But, um, okay, and that, that's all the monsters for the level, but there's four secrets that we haven't found. So if y'all will just indulge me, I want to try and find some of these, like... Yeah, like, I want to see if I can get that. Like, can I just... If I just run up now... Okay. Oh, look at this. There's, like, a little... Lava cave. All right, so that that might require some real spelunking to get to. Where was the opening into that? Okay. So let me see how far I can get down. Oh, man. Okay. So you can get out there and mainly just die. Uh, but you can get a real view of... The jagged, red, cracked pentagram hellscape. Um, yeah, and like all these little bits are sort of... Oh, look at this. Okay. Aha. All right. I think this might be the way onto a secret path. Got a dead caco. All right. Secret is revealed. All right, soul sphere. And yeah, let's just feast our eyes on this disquieting sight. Heck yeah. Okay, so that was one secret, but yeah, and is that is that hinting that maybe these other secrets can be reached in a similar way? Yeah. I really want to know how to get up there. Yeah, okay, so that, that that is just... This jump, even from this ledge here up to that, is just not happening. Uh, and we can get out there and get a look at... Yeah, I mean, now that I have the Soul Sphere, I guess I could just get down and, like... Aha! Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, so what good does this do me? Because I don't think I can get... I mean, having the chain gun is cool and all, but I don't know if I can... And yeah, I died. Alright, so if I can get in there, like, what what else am... Alright, yeah, and that's, that's a little secret 
chamber. Hello, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, okay. Wow, it's really dark off in that direction. I that's 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 one thing that I, oh look at this oh heck yeah all right so that's the map. Um, yeah, how much real estate does this map have that we aren't privy to? It doesn't look like a whole lot, really. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. You can see these little niches that I'm pretty sure are where the uh, evil eyes that you shoot are. Okay, alright. So I can get back up this way. Alright, did that actually help me, though? Oh, wait, and I have the, uh... I have the auto map, but... It's not actually... It looks like there's a bunch of stuff that isn't visible on the... Uh, that doesn't show up on the auto map. Which, you know, okay, fair enough. Whoops. Man. And yeah, that lava sure is damaging. Okay, so the auto map is back there. That's cool. That's good to know, but I need to have a plan for, for getting back into the getting back into the main part of the level. Is there anything off in here? Nope. Hmm. Yeah, maybe if I got there... Alright, this, this is a random idea. Worth trying. We're in a we're in a no we're in a low pressure hurt me plenty type playthrough, right? So Okay, so I thought that, that maybe crossing here would do something, but I don't think it did. And yeah, I can get back up that way. Did anything reveal itself over here? After I've already been through? Doesn't look like it. Oh, look at this. What does this do? Okay, alright, so that's just... This is just a functional little get back onto the path thing. Yeah, interesting, like... Yeah, alright. Hmm. Try checking out that first ledge secret a little more. Okay, yeah, that's... That is definitely the most pay dirt that we found as far as, uh... This is definitely in the genre of Buckethead track that's just, like, him cycling between a bunch of different weird Buckethead vibes, you know? Where it's, like, evil weird circus you know, strange, glitchy thing, malfunctioning shred robot, and then just like, you know, kind of like a more fast driving shredding guitar sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, good, good point. I, I do feel like there is another evil eye somewhere here that if we could find that... Oh, look at... Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, so that'll get us up to here. And then we can get here. And then jump down to here. Now that we've got a rad suit, the world is our oyster, kind of. Alright. So, and that's the third secret. And now I guess we can go get... Oh, rad suit leakage. Gotta watch that lava. Okay, now we jump down here. And get a little bit more 
get a little more goodies. And there is a weird way back up here. Okay. All right, and that is all of the items. I'm not going to try to 100% every level necessarily. Ah, jeez. Um, I'm not going to try to 100% every level here, but these early secrets feel significant because I'm kind of learning what the language of this particular level set is. And it is definitely different from Vanilla Doom, such as a big, you know, goat face being the exit switch. Alright, yeah, we've got some, we've got a buckethead track entirely dedicated to being the intermission music. That's awesome. Yeah, the spiderweb cracks in the ground are just what I associate with Romero's post 90s level design. That's, you know, if anybody does it from, from now on, particularly if they're like, you know, red cracks, like those bright red cracks. It is going to it is going to be hard to escape the sense that that anyone else is biting his style. Though I'm sure you could find prior art in the wide in the wide world of uh, of you know the past 25 years of Doom maps. Okay, so this is the second level, Sheol, which I believe is like uh, isn't it like the Hebrew word for like underworld or something? Um, you know, just one of those just generally like evil, you know, this is hell, expressed variously. Okay, uh, and yeah, we've got, like, everything surrounded by lava here. We've got, like, a cool evil spaghetti floor. And, yeah, alright, so we've got these. Do, are these objects meaningful? Or are they just, uh, maybe something's going to make these go away or rise up? Perhaps? I don't know. Unconventionally shaped lifts. These don't feel like, you know, Space Marine base lifts. They are strange, skinny things. And now we've just got like a super big, super dark area. Hell Baron. I mean, I can. I've definitely got enough ammo to, to burn this guy down, but I also want to make sure that I don't fall off of. This narrow little platform that I've got here. Definitely feel like I'm fighting him for the red key. Alright, I did it. I have proven that I probably completed episode four. <laughs> um, and yeah, somebody mentioned uh, a similarity to E4M2, uh, Romero's level, you know, one of Romero's two levels from, uh, from episode four. Um, perfect hatred, which definitely one thing I'm, I'm seeing in common, and I, w I was honestly expecting from the moment he announced it, is uh, dealing with not having... Fighting standard Doom monsters in fairly tough combinations in... Hold on. Uh, in situations where you don't have a lot of ground to fight on. Um, that's what this, this, this whole thing here... Even though this is fairly wide right here as a walkway, if you're doing like the typical dodging dangerous Baron fireballs... Uh, that's definitely it. That's a that's an E4 M2 kind of feeling thing. Um, cool. All right. So like, oh, evil cracks. Also, if I am perfectly centered on these, do I take damage? No, it doesn't look like it. Because I want to say the cracks in E1 M8 B made you take damage. But regardless. It looks cool as heck. And, yeah, it's just pulsing. Okay. Alright, so, like... So we got the red key. Does that... Did anything change back here? No. Oh! That guy's back there. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird... Oh, yeah. Give me that armor. Oh, man, and it's so... Like, th this is a... Both of these maps so far have been making a really cool use of darkness. Like... There's clearly, yeah, my auto map tells me that there is stuff that, you know, there is definitely geometry back there, but I feel really hesitant to enter to enter it because it's like, you know, who the heck knows? There's definitely lava, so I would be taking damage for the, you know, for the chance to go back, to go around there. Okay, like, all right, so I think I know where to go now. I want to go 
I want to take this detour. And that's another thing about like, you know, if you if you see how the critical path goes in uh, Romero's two episode four maps, um, going out across that narrow walkway is definitely like, oh yeah, that could be critical path. Whereas in, you know, in a Doom map that is taking pains to be gentler, it would be like, oh no, that, that's a, this is a secret. You know, if you see this kind of path, it's like, oh, this is a secret. You're doing this to get a treat. Uh, and maybe that was the case here, but, you know, it sort of has... Oh, okay, yeah. This does seem like it's opening a way forward. Just mutilated Baron up on the wall there. I guess the mutilated Baron texture was a... Um, Sandy Peterson used this in E2M8 to be like as sort of a foreshadowing thing. You get to this level and you're like, am I going to face a boss? Oh, geez, this thing has like you know, wrecked these barons and put them on display. It's like, this, I must be facing an entirely more dangerous kind of uh, kind of demon. And then, of course, you face the, the cyber demon, so... Okay, yeah, we can't quite get in there. <clears throat> okay, alright. Let's see how we can get back here. I'm kind of full up, but... Oh, yeah, and this all comes down. Heck, yeah. It's our first first appearance of Spectres and our dear old friend, the Cacodemon. Oh, lights just went off. That's pretty awesome. Pretty rad. Just dark enough to mistake the dead Baron on the wall for a live Baron. Yeah. <laughs> first unappearance of Spectres. Yes, quite right. Uh, cool, yeah. Well, yeah, and just look at the overall shape of this thing. It's like this bizarre, like, it has some rectilinear elements, but, like, it's also got just all these weird organic things. Like, I think we're definitely seeing, like, a cool evolution of, you know, from episode four getting more and more weird and hellish. Um. <clears throat> oh. oh, okay, this warped us back here. Okay. Um... And can I not get back up here at all? Have I... Am I never going to get back up there again? Maybe not. That's not too big a deal, but... Alright, and so, like... I kept thinking that this was actually going to... Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to hop off here just to see if this is a teleporter. Nope. It is not. Oh, look at that. I saw some fire blue. Or my eyes just deceiving me. Oh, those are teleporters! The floating, like, skull guys are teleporters. Fascinating. Okay. That one is also a teleporter. Cool. Okay. That's pretty rad. Alright, so where does this one take us? This is really interesting. Like, it's basically taking, you know, objects that we've seen thousands and thousands of times over the years playing user-made Doom levels, and just being like, okay, well, this this means something different now. We're remapping it in a way that is consistent. Oh, check that out. All right, so that's an evil eye, so we know we know that's going to do something. Berserk. Heck yeah. All right. All right, and that's where, that must have been where we came in. It is kind of the Majora's Mask of Doom. That's a, that's a really good analogy, yeah. And yeah, as, as, we, as we know, Majora's Mask was the somewhat disturbing, you know, left turn uh, for Zelda. And, you know, I think maybe some people are divided on it, but, uh, you know, as a cool thing to do with a, res with, a, with a respected franchise, it's definitely up there. Oh, wait, did I not hit this back in the... What did that do? can't tell if that is opening something. Oh! It opened up this. I think if I had... I have the, the volume down semi-low here. Actually, do I have the... Okay. Okay. Alright. Why don't y'all infight? There we go. Are y'all just not gonna infight? Okay, there we go. Kako, please kill the Baron. I will help. And your reward is that I will punch you. Out of love. 
Okay, um, alright, so this feels like, yeah, okay, so we're still missing two secrets, but that is all of the monsters for this level. I'm guessing the secrets have to do with, like, exploring the little, like, hopping into all these little, uh, floating, floating chunk things. Yeah, okay, so that opened that. Let's see, did I, have I, have I used all of the little floating teleporter things? Maybe not. And yeah, there's definitely, like, a lot of negative space around this area that I've been playing in. It would definitely be, like, a real trip through the lava to, uh, to investigate those, but could be worth doing. Yeah, super intricate little... Yeah, like, that one really has me wondering. Uh, okay, let's just put me back here. NBD. Yeah, and were there any other... Are there any other little pockets in the auto map that look like they could be... Oh, look at this. I think the structure off to the east of me. Yeah, alright, so this was where... This really looks like it could be... Oh, maybe not. Oh, oh, look at that! That was a fire... Okay, I, I wasn't... My eyes weren't deceiving me. That was a fire blue teleporter thing there. And now I'm in here. And now, clearly, I can just jump down through here. So there absolutely is, like, a method to all of this madness, you know? This is... This is this all feels pretty... You know... If you've played... You know... Many Doom levels, you'll be able to... To catch on to the, uh... What is this? Interesting. What would this be? This might just be the thing with the with the hanging baron. No, I want to go this way along here. There's the hanging upside guy, upside down guy. This that little chamber there might have just been where there were monsters. Yeah, I'm guessing that that's what that is. All right, so that's all, but there's one secret I haven't found, and it clearly has the last remaining item in it, but I'm not going to stress about that too much because I feel like I've, you know, found some cool stuff and poked around in this level. So why don't we continue on to the next level? Assuming that this is the exit, yes. Alright. Cages of the Damned. Alright. Whoa. Are these crushers? Well, they're not crushing me so far, but that is an easy promise to rescind in Doom. Pretty consistent treatment on the uh, entrance door for levels. It's got like the two gargoyles, wooden skull door. This is going very heavy on the wood paneling thing. Getting these little Pac Man pellet breadcrumb armor bonuses. All right, well, this wad has taught me shoot every single evil eye, so let's do it. Yeah, there's clearly, like, just a dark little labyrinth off in that direction. There's a little bit more of a quieter, atmospheric buckethead track going on here. All right, so there's a red key in there. How do we get there? Oh! Oh! I'm... Okay, so probably shooting that evil eye opened up this this little labyrinth back here. And it looks like it has a blood floor, so let's definitely grab that rad suit. Is that a, 
ca okay, no, that's a dead caco. That, op that opened up something. Okay, and we might want to come back here with the red key. Okay. Make a mental note there. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So this opened up a whole bunch of stuff. And I think we're getting our first look at a custom sky here. So that's pretty cool. A lot of imps in cages. Fireballs coming from a lot of directions. There's a Kako there who is probably going to finish dealing with yeah that infighting there. Oh, those those imps hate him. What I liked most about these levels is that they're very playful and mix things up in a in a lot of a lot in weird hellish ways. But the evil eye ending wall things are constants. Man, this has me thinking of how one could go go about doing a Majora's Mask of Quake, or like, what is Majora's what is Majora's Mask nightmarish asset reuse versus novice doesn't know how to texture reuse? <laughs> right? Yeah, I think you know it's frequently not as simple as this, but there's that old saying: you got to know the rules before you can break them. And I think that's definitely what's uh, what's happening here. You know, is just like okay. We know this guy can uh, can make a good doom level, so you know what are we uh, what are we seeing? You know what's what's gonna you know how is how is it going to surprise us? Um, yeah, this this sky here is interesting. It's like this. It's actually a lot more muted. Like you know, the foreground in the level has all these intense reds and stuff, whereas you know the sky is comparatively sort of a relief from that. Uh, I think that's a that's a cool visual decision. You know, so many Doom uh, wads like Plutonia and stuff like that have um, these intense, oppressive red skyboxes. And it does look cool. Like, you know, that is just a classic sort of Doom, you know, bit of atmosphere. Oh, geez. All right, I'm seeing a Baron. I'm seeing... God, that looks that looks amazing. Just that silhouette of the Baron. It's so simple, but that silhouette of the Baron, like marching towards, you know, with the with the with the flame texture behind him. It's real good. All right, I am running out of space here. Why don't I just gotta squeeze past your buddy? All right, I have enough firepower here that I'm not too, you know. Oh hey. Yeah, I was. Yeah, the Baron silhouette is that is is a key visual of this of this thing so far. Um, oh, and the fact that it's pulsing. You know, I think like yeah, I from the very first time I started designing Doom levels, but also just like stuff that I do these days, pulsing light and a thing to make it look like something as a light source that's blinking off and on is like real solid. And then just in conjunction with this like burning f flames texture it's it's gold you know so yeah super good um all right and yeah this level has unfolded really nicely here it felt like an entirely indoor thing uh but now it's opened up we got all this um but yeah and it looks like there's stuff along the periphery that maybe we can get to i guess i'm retracing my steps here but is there anything i can jump down to See these little teleporters down here that are almost certainly just little safety teleports. And yeah, this is also like something that we've we've seen on pretty much all of the maps so far is like cutaways from this like gray pyrite sort of rock, jagged cutaways that are just like little tableaus with dead monsters in them and stuff. Oh hey, look at you. Oh yeah, we now have the red key, so I guess we could um Is this maybe oh that's a secret. Hell yeah. Can I? Oh, jeez. Oh, wait, I have a chainsaw. No, I don't. I don't. Okay. 
All right, so this is just like a little chamber that must have been what the, that the Baron, what the Baron was uh, was sitting in. All right. Oh, okay, and now we're back here. So actually, yeah, like I thought we were gonna have to double bath to get here, but the layout has done our doubling back for us, which is always a pro move. Something's coming down. I think this is like the outer shell. This is like the outer layer of what we were walking around in before. So yeah, this this whole level is definitely like an onion. And yeah, just a giant upside down blinking red cross. Just going all in on Oh look at that. Let's do that. How interesting. Some sort of complex door locking mechanism. Oh heck yeah, rocket launcher. I really like the, so far, I really like the, uh, you know, you can get the chain gun in the first level as a secret, but um, I really like how carefully rationed, oh man, I am just wasting these rockets. Oh, come on, dude. Come on. Come to Papa. Yeah, now, I just completely wasted those rockets. Homeboy was just going back and forth like a little shooting gallery duck or something. Um, yeah, what I was saying about the chain gun, uh, basically bullets are rare enough that I want to pull out the chain gun only when it's particularly useful, i.e. to to, uh, to stun lock a caco. Um, and that feels really good, you know, because a lot of Doom levels, they just give you a bunch of all kinds of ammo, which if it's shotgun ammo and it's Doom 2 and you get the super shotgun, you're going to be cranking through that shotgun, those shells. Uh, but then you just have, you always have 400 bullets, and you'll use, you'll occasionally use the chain gun where it makes sense to, but then, like, you know, it's, it's, you still just, you're still frequently just topped off. So feeling hungry for chain gun bullets, uh, for the situations where you need it, I think is a good way of, um, oh, okay, yeah, this is the end. And, yeah, alright, so that's all the monsters in this level. We've still got two secrets to find. What is... Yeah, so I found... I got that... That was just crit path. Oh, and now maybe... Okay, yeah. So this this gets me back to... Uh, yeah, all right. So that's the exit, basically. And if I want to get back into the rest of the level, I kind of have to... Where does this take me? Okay, this takes me here. Where does this take me? Okay, this gets me, gets me back onto the mainland without having to run through some lava slash blood. Um, cool, okay, yeah, and this, I really like how this opened up into like a nice little, you know, this felt like it was gonna be an, in, an, an interior linear level at first, but then it just unfolded into this nice little circular layout. Um, yeah, wait a minute, what's back here? Is this, did I find everything back here? Okay, yeah, I think I did. And like, what's in here? Oh, look at that. How do I get up there? How do I get up there? Man. All right, there must be a switch or something that I hit that. Oh yeah, look, okay. So we got green torches here. Okay, and then two candelabras. Sometimes th that's something worth paying attention to. You know, there, there's one map, uh, I think it might be Sean Green or American McGee's uh, map in episode four that has one of those like odd colored torch use secrets or it might even be, no, it's not Crypt Path, it's a secret. Um, so that is definitely something in the secret toolbox that, all right, so this isn't a jump across thing. Ah, oh, but man, I want to get up there. I mean, it could just be the hatch that the cacos, that some cacos came out of, but maybe not. Blood is sometimes damaging and sometimes not. Yeah, that's right. This isn't lava. This is actually just all blood. Um, yeah, that's something that like a lot of the IWAD maps are inconsistent about. Um. Hello, welcome. I'm not sure why you didn't get a notification. Like Twitch just doesn't send people notifications sometimes. I wish I knew why. All right, so like. <clears throat> Are any of these teleporters special? I 
feel like they would probably look different. Alright. Um, yeah, like, what's... Oh, yeah, it looks like there's a secret -y connection here. And I don't know if that's a teleport or what. It looks like it's on the far end of this uh, of this space. Yeah, so, like, there's a little secret tunnel that connects some of these things. But I don't think that's jumpable. It could be. Um, I got the box. The box, my box is on the way. It's supposed to arrive tomorrow, according to UPS. But I decided to just get the digital download. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, so I came up short on that jump. And I got the berserk, but I didn't... Okay, there we go. Sweet. Yay, I got up here. Is that the last secret? No. It is one of two secrets that I have yet to get. Okay, oh, and look at this. Another evil eye. That opens this up, and heck yeah. Oh man, we got the backpack. We are cooking now. Oh, I see, and that actually answers my question of how I get back to uh, to here. And so yeah, that's that's it for this level. Just grab that green armor just to top it off. Okay. All right, well, that was Cages of the Damned. Uh, these levels continue to be pretty rad. Um, all right, what's next? Paths of Wretchedness. Gotta love these metal-ass level names. Uh-oh. This is cool. Not as much red. Some marble ruin type stuff. Feels like a change of pace. And again, here we're being given like a pretty narrow little path to uh, pick our way along. Woo! And yeah, definitely a more chilled out buckethead track. I'm digging it though. You, you need you need some uh, you need pacing. plenty of ammo here, so I can just... This is something that, um, in retrospect, you know, Romero was starting to experiment with. Like, having paths... Oh, yeah, that's, that's just cool little bits of detailing. Um, <clears throat> having a path that seems straightforward, but is getting broken up in various ways, is something that was definitely present in uh, Doom 2 Map 29, The Living End. Um, like, right at the end there, you've got, like, you know, those jagged kind of paths. I don't know, like, there's a whole lot of little things in Romero's work that you can tell were early appearances of an idea that were later developed, you know? I mean, you know, every every creative person does that kind of stuff. Um, cool, all right. And yeah, it comes up and the texture is perfectly aligned. Uh, all right, so... Yeah, all right. I don't know what that did yet, but I think we'll find out. And this is just a cool setup, you know? It's like picking our way along an organic terrain feature while we're fighting things that are standing in a more architectural thing. And uh, now we get to now we get to hop a, get on a bridge go across to this space. We kind of know that there will still be some enemies like this guy lurking still. Cool. Man, I don't want to pick up this Soul Sphere just yet, just because I'm, I'm, I'm still full up. I am definitely going to, to have another run through this uh, on UV for sure, because, like, I don't know exactly what to expect, you know? I mean, like, I've I've been watching uh, lately, um, I forget his handle, but he's a YouTube... He plays uh, fairly hard Doom levels on YouTube um, and has done like a series of very informative videos about various things in Doom. He did like the pacifist run as, as well, I believe. Um, but uh, I've been watching his his series that he's been posting lately of uh, running through Hell Revealed 2, 
those levels are no joke. Those are he's doing like UV max runs of Hell Revealed 2, and man, that is rough stuff. So watching him lately, I, that's sort of where my expectation of how hard a Doom level is going to swat me. Uh, you know, that's where that's calibrated. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a this is a good challenge, but. I'm definitely up for up for a UV run after I after I do this. Okay, um, cool. All right, wow, this is quite a path that it's taken us along here. I'm kind of guessing that we might be making our way into the interior of this, but uh, yeah, just cool river of lava. But now we kind of got to jump down here, and you never know if you're going to be able to get back up in a level that's trying to kill you. Oh wait, that was we don't have the red key, but we were able to hit that switch that was flanked by the red skull. Interesting. Alright, that's where we jump down. Grody meat wall teleporter. Perhaps this is one of the cage cages of wretchedness. Oh, and now we're back at the beginning. Okay, well. Um and now does this open you know, I didn't actually explore this very fully. Oh man, okay. This is just a whole separate little wing of the level going on here. Darkness. Yeah, the level of darkness is just right. You know, it's like, oh, hey buddy. Alright, I have rockets for you. And this time, I'm not gonna miss. Gotcha. Oh, I see. That's like a continually raising and lowering thing going on. Okay, that's cool. That seems like a little candle on the wall. I see an invulnerability sphere up there. Let's see. Does this connect to... Yes, it does. Oh boy, it's super dark. And yeah, there we are. Heck yeah, that might that might have been meant for me to to grab while I'm fighting the. Uh... Oh jeez, oh jeez, we're in Crusher Town here. I hope this invulnerability holds up long enough for me to get the heck out of dodge here. Ah, do not want to be crushed. No. <laughs> Well, this is, yeah, this is probably the cage of wretchedness right here. Like, I just would not want to be that guy in there. Yeah, Perfect Hatred still is just, yeah, one of the most no-punches-pulled levels in any of the id releases. Inclu I would say including Plutonia and stuff. Okay, so some cool off-the-beaten-path stuff there. Where does this... Okay, so there's like a whole little back... back hallway here. Whoop. Okay, so... did... Yeah, like, there were all those crushers there, but I don't think I can actually do anything with those. Oh, wait, maybe I maybe I can go to the other side of that? Oh, okay, yeah. All right, so, I mean, that's another cage of wretchedness right there. Or path of wretchedness. Why did I say... Why did I think cages? I don't know. Anyway. Um, all right, so we've got more crushers going on here. Is there anything at the end of this path? Yikes. So it is possible to navigate these things. It's just... Ah! <laughs> That's what I get. Yeah, so it is possible to, to avoid these things. You just gotta... Just gotta watch your step. 
Yeah, there's definitely a doom si a doom marine sized little gap you can get in there. This really feels significant. I mean, like, I guess it's just a. All right. Cages of the Damned was was the previous. Okay, yeah. All right. I'm just just mixing up my my map names here. Okay, so we get back to here. Can we? Yeah, let's try running along here. Oh. Okay, so, well, so this is definitely one of the titular paths of wretchedness because we're just continually sinking into the lava. It feels like these are like little ice flows, you know, but they're continually melting as we sink into the... Oh, okay, and there's the yellow key. So this is crit path for sure. Hey, buddy. Oh, no. All right, so that's good. I like that. It's like, oh, you're in lava. You don't want to be in lava. Now fight a caco. Oh, now the one patch of ground that seems safe actually has two demons. That's good. That's good. Alright, yeah. Was that an arrow? I don't think I saw an arrow. Oh yeah, I think I can I can definitely see where there's a secret that I uh, that I haven't found yet. Uh oh, what's this is this gonna be a baron? There's a baron, like, just right up in my face here. I'm not going to be too surprised. Jeez, you know, it also occurred to me that, like, I don't know which uh, level has the secret... has the secret level exit, and I absolutely do want to play the secret level. So I'm hoping that... I, I've only passed up, like, a couple of secrets so far in these levels. I really hope that one one of the ones that I passed up isn't isn't one of those. And that I haven't missed my chance. But, uh... Yeah, alright. Okay, yeah, this is where I came down. This is where I hopped down. And this takes me back to the beginning. Okay, yeah. All right. Oh yeah, okay, I think I can, let's see. Looking at the auto map here, is that, yeah, okay. All right, a little secret with the rocket launcher. Cool, cool. I think, yeah, the, these levels also do seem like they are hard but doable from a pistol start. So that's another thing that I'll that I'll have to do at some point is just yeah play through these with pistol start. Um, cool. Well, yeah, we've got a pretty good over overall view of what's going on here. Um, yeah, at the far south is definitely there's definitely a part of this level that's like behind all three of those key bars. So yeah, that's that's clearly where we're gonna end up. Um, and then is this like a dead end, basically? No, no. Okay, I had it the other way around. Oh, the sinking path kind of looked like an arrow. This is um. This, uh, the lighting treatment here, you know, a few times I've seen it and I've been like, oh, is this, is this, is this, when I saw it with that little candle back in the, the hallway to the, to the west. Um, but I think this is actually just Romero's just treatment for a lot of these light sources. It's like, okay, it's a cylinder with light type flicker, I guess, you know, where it's kind of like randomly flickering up and down. Um, it looks good. And I like that it's just its own, like, I don't see this as much, I feel like, as, um, you know, there's a lot of tendency, like when I was making Arcadia D made, um, I was really into uh, making little light gradients, you know, like making it feel like each light had its own little sourcing around it. Um, you know, and like chopping up like small sectors to make like, an, you know, a smooth, to make it feel like uh, an edge of falling off uh, light. Um, you know, which is 
one way to do it, and you know, I, I, I had people tell me that 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 they thought that that looked that, that they thought that the lighting in Arcadia looked good. Uh, and then I was playing Scythe 2 uh, the other day, and I was reminding, I was remembering that like, oh yeah, there's another school that still uses the gradient thing, but they tighten them up as it gets near the light source, which actually looks really nice because it's it feels like it's a sharp shadow that's then getting diffused. So like, it's a good example of how like you know, even in you know before in before Quake gave everybody light maps and those kinds of interesting intricate shadows. Not exactly for free, but, you know, via the magic of pre-compiled, you know, soft light maps. Um, people were still very interested in... People had all kinds of different approaches to lighting effects. Um, and I think that Romero's here is uh, is kind of distinctive, actually. Um, and it looks, it looks good. Okay, so I jumped down there and... Yeah, like, this was at the end of that whole path. I don't know if there's anything that I've really missed so far. Yeah, like... Yeah, where do I... So where do I find the blue key? That is my question. I actually don't know if these levels are designed... Like, if Romero has a preference on Mouse Look versus not. Uh, I know that some people consider Mouse Look in Doom of any kind, kind of sacrilege... Um, I've never minded it, like, as soon as it became possible. I mean, I didn't like it back in the software renderer, in, like, the ZDoom software renderer days, when it would, like, distort as you looked up and down. But now that we've got, like, full-on OpenGL slash Vulkan renders and whatever, and, like, you know, it looks good, and it just feels... I don't know. It just feels right to me, and I, you know, I only extremely rarely feel like I'm... like I'm... like I have it easier because I have mouse look. Um, alright, so, like, I've, I've been here, but, like, I don't know... I don't know where else to go, necessarily. Are there maybe switches at the end of these? Yeah, so I can, like, squeeze through... Ah, no! Yeah, and these things will kill you, for sure. So I hear a door going up and down. I hear like a like a a moving platform going up and down here. Oh look at that. Is that a looks like there's a soul sphere in there. Seeing back into the uh, this is actually a rare appearance of uh, some tech some tech textures that you saw a lot in episode one. So that's kind of interesting to see that back there. Evil Eye in the Wall Cage. Oh. Is there really? Did I just miss it? Oh ho! Good spot. Yeah, don't get crushed. Oh, look. And yeah, and that opened up. Cool. Alright. Thank you for spotting that. Might have gotten that eventually, but... Oh, look at this. Oh, heck yeah. Whoa! Okay, and this is a little behind-the-scenes bit that we were seeing into. Let's go ahead and scoop these shotguns. These guys don't need them. Okay, so what is this going on here? This is like a... Is this maybe the path to the secret level? That would be cool. But yeah, man, this is Crusher Town. Don't really want to mess with this. Okay, so the enemies are standing in safe spots. So I gotta pick my way through here. Or maybe this is crit path, actually, because it looks like we're heading back towards the, uh... No! Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Yep. Okay, wow. So this whole area is just composed of... Yeah, I don't know what that symbol is. I have no idea what that symbol is. 
feels significant. All right. So I basically just got to find out what the next... Is this... Okay, so the ceiling there isn't moving. So that is where I will go. All right, I'm safe here. A map of the maze. That's a that's a that's a cool idea. All right, kind of looks like the space beyond that. Yeah, where those imps are is no. All right, so those two imps. The spot where those two dead imps are is safe. Okay. All right, we made it. We made it. Oh, and it's a broken teleporter. That's cool. Oh yeah, it's like a teleporter that's been snapped in half or something. Nice. All right, so yeah, what is... Is there another path back through here? Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, all right. Okay, so there is definitely a path here that will take us back through. Yeah, I think I know where to go. It's just going to be a question of getting a safe passage there. Where's like, okay, here we go. Oh yeah, okay, and so the lighting isn't pulse pulsing in the safe zones, it looks like. No! This is, uh, is tight. Okay. All right. Is that actually where I want to be? Uh, maybe I... I think maybe I have to just run around... Run around the corner quickly here. Yes! All right. Wow. Okay. See you in Hell Crusher Maze. That was... That was rough. And now we get to go back up here. Is this the blue key? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so while we got the yellow key, we have not gotten the red and... Oh, hey. It's a baron. Cool. Nice outdoor vista here. <clears throat> yeah, like, <laughs> not needing the keys is a hellish mindfuck. Yeah, like, that is... Oh no, what happened? Uh, wow, okay. GZ Doom just crashed. What's going on there? Was that while I was trying to save? I, I hope my save isn't borked. Alright, whatever. Y'all want to infight, maybe, or whatever.
cool. Yeah. Cool, irregular outdoor area. Um, all right. This kind of feels like we're coming up on the coming up on the ending here. What's up, Kakos? Oh no. Demon means I can't really... Demon hampers my ability to use rockets against this guy. Alright. Alright, and that is... Alright, so there are... Th we found three out of five secrets here. And we have... Yeah, we have the auto map, but I'm not seeing a lot of spaces that we haven't already found. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not seeing like significant undiscovered portions of the of the auto map here. We've pretty much found all of this stuff. Yep, there's those things. Yep, found that. All right, so there's like some safety teleports here. I wonder if these are, uh, if these do anything fancy other than just, okay, no, they just take us back here. What are, oh, okay, so what I was hearing that whole time was actually the crusher maze. Yeah, the auto map is definitely not just a here are all the secrets in the map, please have fun finding, you know, please go just go to them now without much investigation. Um, does it look like there's anything off? I think this is all just scenery. This is a really cool, uh, it's using, so when lights pulse in a doom sector, it goes from the brightness set in the editor uh, down to zero and then back up again. And so by having uh, sectors that have different uh, brightnesses set that are then set to pulse, you can get like a rippling type effect, um, and th that's what's that's what's being done here, I think. Um, and yeah, it looks sweet. Yeah, interesting. All right, so like, where would these other secrets be? Like, yeah, I mean, three out of five secrets. Yeah, yeah, like, definitely lots of good avenues for, for clues and stuff. Oh, yeah, look at this right here. I don't know what's what the deal with that is, but it's almost certainly a... Uh... Yeah, all right, let's go here. And... Really seems like there's a secret room somewhere in here, although maybe. This map set hasn't had any, like, just shoot a section of wall secrets so far. Um, my box is not here yet. Uh, it, it's supposed to get in tomorrow, so I, I was going to, like, when I get to roughly a halfway point here, I was going to uh, to call it a day. And then uh, if I get my box tomorrow, then I'll do round two, maybe show that, I don't know, I'm not into, like, unboxings or anything. And I didn't get, like, the, the super duper version with Romero's head or anything, just because I'm not, like, a big collector of physical things, but, you know... Back when the box was, like, the only way to get the full version of this thing, I, I did want to, you know, send them some money and have that just as a... <clears throat> oh, look at this. Okay, so yeah, we can go along here. And there we go. Oh, and then that popped open. Nice. All right, so there's only one secret left. And... 
Is there any place obvious that it would be? I mean, for all I know, there might have been a little secret along the path that... Uh, along, you know, somewhere during that... Uh, yeah, and then there's the question of, right, like that, that particular symbol on the wall there back at the beginning of the, uh, of the crusher of the crusher maze that remains a mystery um hmm all right well I'm going to head back this way. Yeah, like, I wish I knew if the secret I was leaving behind was... Oh! Okay. Alright, that's the secret. That's the last secret. Uh, I guess I missed a few items, but they're probably just, like, some... I don't know, potions or something. And there is a monster that I didn't get. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to cheat real quickly and see where it might... I'm kind of guessing it's a lost soul, like, stuck somewhere. Yep, it's a lost soul that's just stuck back in the hell... in that hell trench that I ran through. Oh, yeah, and actually, check it out. This was... You can see, um... Yeah, you can see the uh, deathmatch area here. Uh, yeah, like... The... Romero did a thing here where... There's a whole deathmatch area outside of the map, and there are only single-player starts in the single-player or or co-op area, and there are only deathmatch spawn points in the deathmatch area. Oh, and actually, yeah, you know what? Like, th that's where the remaining items are. So these, I think, are not flagged as deathmatch only. Oh, I forget if you can even do that, actually, or multiplayer only. Uh, anyway, yeah, so... So yeah, it might not be possible to get 100% items uh, playing in single player on this. So yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah, it'd, it'd probably be worth uh, just doing like a whole separate run through the, uh, the, uh, the DM areas. Alright. Abaddon's... E5M5 Abaddon's Void. Cool. And this looks very big and vast and dark and spooky. So it's being its namesake right off the bat. Got some sort of eerie atmospherics going on here in the soundtrack. Little bottles. Ledge bottles. Oh man, yeah, and this feels... This is real big. Romero's uh, second Episode 4 map has sort of a similar, you know, the main space of it is fairly big and open, and so you'll just get, you know, enemies that you can't even really tell what part of the level they're in. Chucking fireballs your way, just sort of... Ooh, yeah. Alright. Man, okay. This level feels intimidatingly big. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. We've got... Auto map is showing us just a whole outdoor kind of area here, and yeah, just using the jagged, the jagged evil lightning just all over the damn place. It's real good. Oh, there's a little secret. There are only two secrets on this map. Where'd you go, buddy? Whoa! All right, so some tricky little lift usage here. Whoop. Alright, 
So I go here. Oh, do I gotta make a jump here? Jump! I did it. something. Alright. What's the technical difference between an episode and a megawad? Um, yeah, so apparently, like, according to the Doom Wiki, I guess, uh, the official definition of a megawad is 18 is a wad with 18 or more maps, which is which is interesting. I had never noticed that before. You know, I, I mean, back in the day, I always assumed that a megawad was a wad that does a full 32 Doom 2 replacement map thing. Um, but there are plenty of yeah. If you just look at if you just look at megawad on uh, on Doom 2 uh, on on the Doom Wiki, you know, you'll see that definition and and a list of notable megawads. Um, uh, but yeah, so, you know, and Romero calls Sigil a megawad, which, that's fine, I don't know, I don't, like, I don't necessarily care if it's, you know, he's allowed to define that as, as he wants, really, um, you know, it's nine maps, um, and yeah, it is, it is definitely an episode, uh, just because it does actually slot into the, um, into the Doom 1 episode format. You know, and Doom 2 is considered to have episodes as well, but they're not broken. You don't select them from the start. Uh, and, you know, you don't reset your weapons and stuff in between them and all that. Um, I still do kind of wish, and I'm guessing a lot of other people do still wish, that um, that Doom 2 had been divided into episodes just for, like, kind of, not storytelling, but just, like, organizational and just, like, having those clear divides in the experience of, like, what each of what they considered a unit of the game, but, you know, it's fine, whatever. It brings up the intermission text. Um, alright, so, like, I guess I... Oh, wait. Did this open some... Oh, okay, yeah, this this opened this. And now we're kind of outside and up on a higher level. Of course, I immediately go for a secret, for something that feels secrety. Can I make this jump? I don't know if I can make this jump, honestly. Bleh. Bad jump. Whatever. I'm not gonna... I got my goodie out of it. Alright, so it leads us up to here, and then this is where we started. So, like... Hmm. Wait a minute. These things aren't... These things aren't teleporters, are they? No, they're not. They're just normal skulls. Um, Alright. So we did that whole little circle. I guess maybe the, the point of that was just to bring us to... I mean, it did raise up a bridge here. Oh, but wait, we can't go back through here. Cool, okay. Hmm. I actually don't have a clear idea at all of, like, how... how I got to the sections that I got to. Okay, well, there's this whole other structure here that we can explore. Skull Shrine. That's an interesting shape. This, this this set definitely teaches me to teaches you to creep along edges. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, actually, this is. Oh yeah, okay. This is just like a whole separate little island building thing. 
Interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely digging how the soundtrack is much more just like horror ambience kind of stuff here. It's a good change of pace. Okay, so yeah, structurally this is actually kind of like Mount Erebus in that, you know, it's like big open space with little islands that you, or just little buildings that you go into. Um, Alright, let me try this again. I go up here. On UV, there's two cyber demons in the lava sea. Damn, that's that would make quite a difference. Ah. Alright. Okay, we got across here. Yeah, and I went out there. Hold on, I'm going to hop down here. Does this do anything? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I guess I haven't gone here, so I can hop down and... Oh, right, that's on the far side of that thing that I was pretty sure was a cool secret jump. Oh, yeah, all right. Skull bridge. Bridge made of skeleton heads. Oh, and look at this. Okay. Aha! Now we're making some progress. Cool. Yeah, this feels like Hurt Me Plenty feels like it's being pretty gentle here. I mean, I'm definitely begging to have my butt kicked by in saying that, but... Alright. Evil eye. Oh, hey, buddy. Lost souls. Just those two imps there are enough to just... or three... are enough to just... keep you on your toes. Wait, is there another... oh, there's Lost Souls down here. Stuck in their little hell chamber. Some cool vines. Reddish hell plus vines, I feel like, is a relatively underutilized, you know, aesthetic combination in doomed level design. There's just all kinds of nonsense in there. Oh, and this is non-damaging blood. Consciously, I knew that, but... Alright, this creepy red... Yeah, tunnel. There is our buddy the blue key, so that will definitely get us into some good areas. Oh yeah, cool, and we're pointed right at it. Yeah, these walkways, so this is like a actually a pretty significant part of this level's flow is just having like these walkways that hug these buildings and let you get across to various things. So you can't get into much at ground level, but There's the yellow key, but how do I get it? 
How do I get that yellow key? There's a teleporter there. That must be it. I must have to... Oh, look at that. There we go. Oh, wait. Is that the uh, is that the end of the level? No, it's not. All right. Where did we see a yellow key? Yeah, let's cross here. Two cyber demons out here in UV, you said. That is... That is a very dramatic difference. Particularly if you don't have a BFG. That is that is a whole other little project to deal with those. Oh hey. Big old spaghetti floor lift. Cyber demons are basically turrets, non-moving. Oh, okay, interesting. I mean, that's still super rough. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, like, deal with that. Cyber demons will be shooting you with rockets the entire time that you're not inside of one of these little buildings. Kako. Picked a fight with a lost soul. Oh wow, yeah, there's a whole thing up here. We are definitely in flesh hell evil face central here. Okay, that's where I came in. Does that Okay, yeah, now that opens up the way along here. Well, that's evil looking. This level, um, th this, this map set has made very successful use, I think, of just, like, barons as, like, rank and file. Like, they're always, inter they're frequently integrated with... I don't know. It's just like it 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 normalizes Baron uh whoops. You know, Barons just feel like a very normal part of the monster population. Um and yeah, like, you know, they still have the I forget who it was that, that coined the the saying that a baron is like a door with leg is is like a door with hit points. Um or a door with legs. Because, uh, yeah, it still does take a lot of, you know, damage to actually kill them but um but i do feel like they're they're well used here um am i am i stuck in here now no oh no uh i hope i'm not locked in here now oh wait that was a that's a proximity trigger Crap, am I really sealed in here now? Maybe not. Okay, so there is... Uh, okay, I've only found one of the two... I've only found one of the two secrets. I've killed all the monsters. There's four items. This definitely feels like it could be the level with the secret exit. Um, yeah. Alright, let me... Let me see what I can let me see what I can find in the vicinity. And then there's like a whole there's this oh look at that. Did that was this always down? Oh, it teleported me to here. Interesting. I mean I have kind of found all of the, the stuff in here, but I don't know where a secret would be if it was in this. Hmm. Hello, welcome. Um, yeah, I am currently, yeah, we're at the end of E5, M5 here, and I am puzzling about where the other secret in this is. Um, 
at this point, I'm definitely worried that I've that I've already missed my chance to uh, to find the secret level. And this teleports me just right out into yeah, like that's a weird place to teleport for that teleporter to take me to. Are there any other teleporters throughout the map? Yeah, there's that thing. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to explore a little more, and then maybe... Nope. Man, this thing really is just like a big, big structure. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, there's not much to it. As explorable st stuff goes. Weird shaped door. Hmm. I'm kind of guessing the other secret is up on just is just one of these ledges, you know. Let's see. All right, so I think I have to yet again ride the magical little dealy up and do the jump and do this. Now I'm gonna save here. Yeah. So this feels just as far as, like, negative space that could be concealing secrets. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Okay, well, there was secret-ish space back there. Found some extra goodies, you know. And then this. What's the deal with this? Is this Was this a teleport ambush spot or something? He's like, yeah, I can't get in there. Hmm. Curious. And then, yeah, this is just the whole gauntlet to, that goes down to the... Uh... And yeah, I found all the items as well, so it really is just one little secret left. Where does this put me? This puts me up here. I could drop down and go here. Did... Yeah. Very, uh, very tricky the way that this, that this level is, uh, is laid out. Alright, and so that thing is now here. And that just drops me off in the lava there. Hmm. Interesting. Is there anything I can see from just looking around up on my high vantage point here? Man, yeah, the overall darkness of this plus the music and all that, like, it's definitely... Definitely feeling good. And this is, yeah, this is a good change of pace from previous levels. Um, okay, yeah, that's just that little thing that the... Kind of guessing that these torches are, the like, you're, you're on your way to get the, uh, the blue key, and so that's why there's a blue torch there. I don't know probably reading too much into it. Yeah, alright, so... I've been pretty thoroughly all over these, uh, all of these structures here, but... Oh! Look at that! Okay. There's the old secret... Ooh. 
little thing with some rockets is coming down. I'll take it. Okay, and so now I think the, yeah, it's the yellow key structure that is the way out. So this doesn't even seem to have a, a, a red key section. Cool, all right. And yeah, all right, so that's 100% on this map. Unspeakable persecution. Oh man. Whoa, there's some sort of weird, uh, some sort of weird glitching, like, symbol going on there. Evil looking runes or something. Um, so this is E5, M6, so that means that to, still to play, we've got M6, M7, M8, and M9. So that's four of the nine. So this is kind of, this is a pretty good halfway point, so I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, and I've been, been going for almost like two hours, uh, like two and, uh, one and three quarters of an hour, maybe. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call it there for the day, but so what I'm hoping, uh, will happen is, uh, UPS delivers my, my box tomorrow, and then you know, I, I don't know. I don't even necessarily care about having that, you know, present for the stream. But yeah, I can, um, I can, uh, I'll pick it back up. And I'm guessing that the, that the, that the last four levels are going to be harder than the first five, but, um, probably not by too much. And I can probably get through it in, you know, a roughly equivalent amount of time. Um, I was, just, I'm just budgeting out like how, how many streaming sessions this will take to play through. But um, but yeah, that is the first five levels of John Romero's sig Sigil on uh, Hurt Me Plenty. Um, definitely keen to play it on, on UV just for like a, a, a real a real not fooling around challenge. But yeah, thank you so much for watching uh, on this non-WOD Wednesday Sigil Sunday stream. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you all tomorrow or sometime soon. And we'll play through the rest of this thing. In the meantime, enjoy it. Enjoy it if you're already playing it. Or, you know, next week, I guess, the the free version, the free download will come out. But, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, yeah, have a good one, folks. And I will see you all again soon.